Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with a uh, visual-only explainer of uh, Quick Punch Mode in Pro Tools. It's something that some people don't quite understand and hopefully this is going to help. So first I'm going to create an audio track and if I just assign that to the mic I'm talking to you on and record enable it, we'll see here I am on this microphone. Now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename it Speech. And if you notice, over on the right, the clips list at the moment is empty. Now, if I record onto this track, then I can record some speech. And all I'm doing this for is so I've got some waveform that recognisably looks like speech. I need a few seconds of it. I'll keep going. Maybe about 10 seconds will be enough. So there we are. That's plenty. Right. Next, what I'm going to do is, well, first off, I'll point off over here. What we've got is we've got um, an audio clip. This is in bold. You'll notice when the other ones come up, some of the others are, aren't going to be in bold. That means it's it's the entire recording. What that means is this. If I pull this over here and I get the trim tool, like so, and I try to pull it out, I can reduce it, but I can't extend it beyond here because that's where the recording started. And I can't extend it beyond there because that's where the recording ended. It's the whole of the file that's on, on the disc. Great. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this track. I'm going to call it Claps. And I'm going to record some clapping onto this just so that the waveform looks different. That's the only reason. It's not important what it sounds like at all. And I'm going to do that in quick punch mode. I'm going to right click on here and go to quick punch. Now, something that you can do with quick punch is you can start playback and then you can click on this record button and it'll drop into record and click it again and it'll drop out. And that's true. That's that's what the punch part of quick punch is. But that's not the whole story. Because you can do something very similar to that and not be in Quick Punch, but it differs in an important way. And that's what I'm trying to show you today. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to hit play. And then when it's a little way in, I'm just going to hit three on the numeric keypad, going to record. I'll clap a bit. I'll hit three again, and I'll drop back out, keep playback going, and I'll stop it just before it gets to the end. Right. Now we've got something that's quite interesting. Because if we look, we have this claps clip in the middle here. That's the recording that I made. I pressed record here. I pressed record again there. And what we've got is we've got two clips over here. One's in bold and one's not. Now, if you if you click on something with the grab tool, it'll get highlighted in the clips list. You can see what it is. If I click on this one, there we go. It's the faint one. But there's, there's this other one in bold. And that's the interesting one. To show you what that is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Right click on here, duplicate. I'm going to duplicate that twice. I'll make two duplicates of this. And then from here, what I'll do is, uh, first off, I'll delete that claps recording off this track here. So now I've just got speech. Then if I uh, delete these, get rid of all of these, I've got that claps recording on these two tracks. Click on this, that's speech. That's whole file clip in bold. Click on this one, claps, is the faint one. This is what's called a sub-clip. It's, it's, it's part of that whole recording, but there's more of it on disk than is shown on the timeline. If I click on this one, it's exactly the same. So where is this one? Where is this whole file one? Well, if I trim on this recording, we'll see that all the stuff that happened while we are in playback, before I pressed record, got recorded as well, all the way back to the beginning where I started playback. And if you remember, I stopped playback on the record pass before the end of this clip here. So if we trim out here, and there we go, that's it. So to where I hit stop. And that highlighted clip there is this whole file clip. There's the sub clip, which is part of this parent clip. That's what's different about Quick Punch, is that to do what it's doing, it has to record everything and then just automatically create a subclip between where you hit record and then you hit record again to leave record, the punch in and the punch out. And it's recording this stuff in the background. What's good about that? Loads of things, actually. For a start, if you happen to be just playing along with the track and you did some unrepeatable act of genius while you were doing it, it's recorded. You can get to it. Also, if you're right up against it, if you punch in too late and you miss the beginning of the first note, you can just trim back out and get it. If you want to include the breath that happened just before the vocalist started singing, you've got it, even if they're coming in on the downbeat. And the same goes for afterwards. If somebody happens to trail on and you've come out of record too early, 
the stuff that happened after you left record but was still in playback gets recorded. This is kind of like a sort of retrospective record. It's not billed as such because that isn't quite what it is, but it's kind of what it does. Anyway, there we go. That is the difference between regular playback recording and quick punch. It does something slightly different in the background. It has to because of what it's trying to do, but it's kind of useful because you've got all of this stuff that's recorded to the timeline that you wouldn't know was there unless you knew about what these mean and to try trimming out beyond these record past clips. So there you are. I hope that was useful.